Next is, wow, look at this. If T is a million, that means we are really being educated by a lot of old baggage. And the uh, data might have changed, right? So uh, is it wise to listen to so much of the old past data? Very, very old data, X of one, right? So that's another concern after we look at this. Good. But that is not just X of one, isn't it? There is an alpha in front. So let's look at the coefficient of X of one, the very, very old piece of data. So the coefficient of X of one, what is that? That is, first of all, going to be alpha, right? That's immediately multiplying by it. But we are also multiplying by one minus alpha outside here. Then another one minus alpha in the immediate curly bracket outside here and so on and so forth, right? Until we get uh, to the first curly bracket. So there are all together, because it's one, two, three until T. So there are T minus one rows here. And then we have a final row at the bottom here. So if we take this out, we have T minus one, one minus alpha brackets here. So we are going to multiply by one minus alpha t minus one number of times. That's the way we uh, get an insight about the coefficient of x1 very quickly. So what it means is that, uh, suppose, just to get an idea of what this means, right? So let's, let's say, suppose alpha equals to 0 0.5, right? So then the coefficient of x1 becomes uh, 0 0.5, times, uh, and t, let's say it is 100, okay? Let's not put it as 100,000, okay, it's just 100. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 to the power of 100, um, 99, okay, good. So that just means 1 over 2 to the power of 100, because we just multiply in. That is a very very small number. So if my calculation is right, uh, it is basically going to take us to 7.89 times 10 to the power of minus 31. That is a very, 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 very tiny yet non-zero number. So mathematically, the formula, the exponential smoothing method, keeps the constant, the coefficient alive by not setting it to zero and therefore discarding it. So it hangs around. But when it hangs around, it also has a very, very tiny weightage. If this is about voltage, because, you know, uh, of the amount of energy that it emits in, in uh, raising or lowering the forecast value, well, this is going to be so tiny that it's not going to matter at all, right? So the idea is, it sounds like to me that the past voices, they are going to be dying off because when, they are, when, the, when X1 was a very recent data, for example, we had T equals to 2 or 3, then the voice of X1 is very loud. But as time passes, it becomes fainter and fainter because of the automatic multiplication by one minus alpha as time passes. So all these multiplications and everything and adjustment of the coefficients, they're embedded in the formulation. So when we run computer software, we just do this very efficiently, but the mathematical thinking behind is doing everything here. And so it becomes the case when past data dies off like an echo. So it says x1, suppose x1 is 100, right? The echo of 100 will be 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. As time passes, the voice is lower and lower because of the multiplication by a number that's less than one. So the voice is getting softer and softer and softer. And when your voice is so soft, uh, you hardly can be heard, then it doesn't really quite affect the future value, right? So this interplay between uh, allowing the, 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 the term to stick around, yet not setting it to zero because it will change the mathematics a lot. Right? Uh, it's a very, very clever interplay between uh, making the, the formulation very simple 
and yet the sophistication very very hard. You know? So in this in this case, exponential smoothing actually achieves a lot by being simple yet uh, not be affected by our past forecast errors. Also, not be affected by very very stale outdated data. So in that sense, pretty state of the art. So here is an example of. Uh, oops, sorry. So let me uh, switch back the screen. So here is an example of how we apply exponential smoothing. So assuming that alpha is 0.2 and the initial value is a thousand. So those are given. Then what we do is uh, we can do alpha times x of one plus one minus alpha times f of 1, right? So we can do that and get f of 2 and so on. So we, uh, I will urge you to look at the example calculations. I won't bother you with uh, describing all the th things that you can, calculations you can see here. Uh, one thing to note about f1 though, all right, is that here the, the quiz question, exam question, exercise question will typically give you the f1 value. But if you are the one getting so excited about exponential smoothing right and you want to choose or find your own f1 value what do you do now uh, f1 value typically there are uh, maybe three ways to get things started right so one is uh, you look at x1 cheating so when you do this uh, why is this cheating well F1 is supposed to, uh, to be a value that comes in terms of real time before X1, right? Yeah, but how do you get this computation done without X1? So you must wait. You don't have F1, you don't have F1, and then X1 equals 100 comes in. Then you say, oh, wow, uh, I was thinking about having setting F1 to uh, 100 anyways. Right, so, so you kind of wait until X1 comes in, and then you uh, backtrack and by setting your F1 earlier on to the value now that is X1. So that is cheating, uh, quote and unquote, but it's commonly done. And the advantage of that is that you get your exponential smoothing algorithm uh, tuned to the bulk of the value of X uh, quite immediately. Right, so what is the cost? The cost is to waste one cycle. Definitively, you definitely wait one cycle to know X1. So that for, for that cycle, if you're doing trading, you can't trade. If you're doing uh, a GDP forecast, you can't forecast for one year. <laughs> right, so you there's a cost to wait for X1. But once X1 comes in, your algorithm is immediately tuned to the right level. For example, in our series here, our data is hovering around a thousand. If you have no better idea, we might let F1 be a hundred, and that might take a longer time, like four or five cycles for the actual forecast to be uh, running at about a thousand level, right? So that's going to be costly also. If cheating or waiting for X1 is not viable, then uh, F1 can be the result of uh, our research all right we research using other sources maybe it is our implicit knowledge about the situation for example if you're doing rice trading now ah, you know what i've been in this business for 10 years it's always 100 tons so let's just set it at 100. so nothing to do with data past data immediate present future but our ex uh, uh, external knowledge about the operating environment gives us this Right, so that's research, and uh, for for uh, particular projects, we might try to dig up from library. Oh, you know what? In the past, oil reserves. When you discover something that makes the sonar sound, it typically will give us two billion barrels. You know, something like that. So that will be external research. And finally, if all else fails, you can always set F one to a new neutral value, uh, of zero. Okay, now that's going to be uh, the final approach, the last approach, uh, because zero is not necessarily the zero point for all sets of data. Example, our data here, 
the natural reference point is about a thousand, not zero. So, but if there is no way to know about any past data, you can't get any sources, materials, external sources on this project that you are handling, really limited, then no choice, right? You have to let uh, uh, future data educate us about what is X1. Okay, so just set it to zero. But that's just for your consumption in solving exam quiz exercise questions, F1 and alpha will be given. And if they are not obviously given, look further. It has to be given. Okay, so uh, a bit more calculations. All right, so that ends this section on exponential smoothing. And now I encourage you to use more exponential smoothing because it's state of the art, really simple, yet very profound and nice, adaptable, flexible in changing alpha all the time. So by all means, use it, you know, a lot, a lot.